Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the village talk area. I am Tony, our Tough Nuts. When with the Packing Hacking Village, we are just across the way. Come, please, and visit us. And it is my great pleasure to introduce Will, who is going to be talking about some stuff he found about leakage of data in social media. So, without much to do, if I could get everyone to please sit down. Hold on, D9. Can you? There we go. And Will, with that, thank you very much. Here you go. Thank you. Hi. Uh, could I get a show of hands in the audience, those of you who use Reddit? Awesome. Keep your hand raised if you subscribe to the DEF CON subreddit. Good. And one last question. Of those few, keep your hand raised if you post or comment to the DEF CON subreddit? Not too many, just one. All right, that's OK. Uh, yeah, I was hoping for a few more, but that's OK. None of them are here. We can talk as much as we want about them. Um, yeah, so as you've probably read the program. This talk is about me spending the last 12 months, uh, let's call it what it is, stalking the DEF CON subreddit, uh, seeking per people's personal information that they might be leaking uh, online. So yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, language warning, maybe. Uh, information warning, definitely. Uh, particularly anyone who had their hand raised in the last uh, couple of questions, there is a small chance that you individually may be on these slides in the next 45 minutes or so. Uh, but don't freak out. Uh, I've done my due, due, due diligence. Uh, there's plenty of black text all over the slides, so you probably won't even recognize yourself. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say before I started as well, this is meant to be a no prior knowledge required uh, speech, so um, if you have any questions, can we just leave them to the end? Um, and I'm happy to answer them um, after that. But let's get on with it. Yeah, obligatory intro slide. My name's Will. I'm from Australia. Uh, I work for a, a cybersecurity firm there. Uh, my day job is actually not related to this at all. Uh, I work in uh, cybersecurity in the supply chain. Um, so if you're looking through the brief and you're wondering what the hell has this got to do with that, you'd be 100% right. Uh, it has nothing to do with it. Uh, and also, yeah, I guess when I started as well, I had almost none of the skills required and probably still don't uh, to, to do this kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a coder, pretty shit at code. I'm not a social engineer, uh, and you'll probably get that from my, t my shitty dad jokes uh, and my poor taste in memes. And I'm certainly not a data scientist. I have no ability to, to wrangle d large data sets. Um, so yeah, if you're in the audience and you are a professional in any of those areas, I apologize in advance. I'll probably butcher your, uh, your fields of expertise and misrepresent uh, entirely, but yeah. I just uh, I didn't have any of that stuff and just had a crack at it anyway. So this is my second DEF CON. Uh, I came here last year as like a bucket list thing with a few friends. Uh, we went and visited the Wall of Sheep. Uh, if you haven't been there, recommend doing it at some point in, in the conference. Um, and we love the idea of like a practical way of kind of showing people what they were leaking on a network, um, an unsecure network. And um, yeah, we thought that was an awesome idea. And uh, like, like most things, after a few refreshing beverages, we kind of thought, thought to ourselves, that's a really awesome idea. You know, uh, during the conference, um, showing people over those four days what kind of stuff they're leaking. But what about all the stuff that people are leaking 365 days a year, sharing uh, on social media, everything about themselves? And uh, yeah, from there, we were like, uh, wouldn't that be a cool way? Wouldn't that be a cool presentation to sort of collate all of that information um, and yeah, present it back in a kind of like Wall of Sheep online edition? So that's what that's what we kind of came at. So this is what we're going to be talking about. What would a Wall of Sheep online edition look like? Uh, starting with my most overconfident plans. You know, someone with no ability to do it deciding to go and do it. Uh, yeah, what even is a leak? Took a little bit of time to kind of like have to work that out. I had no idea what I was looking for. Um, 
um, or defining what that was going to be. I uh, needed to learn the recon game, had no kind of clue what was going on there. And then sort of like the rest of this talk is really just talking about how I started hunting and gathering and finding those people. And then I promise if you sit through all that, uh, the last few slides we'll be talking about uh, sort of the most juicy slide packs um, of people um, that I found. Yeah, so I was like, how hard could it be? You know, everyone knows people leak stuff online. Everyone knows uh, people overshare all the time. Social media these days has us lulled into this idea that, you know, oversharing is what you should be doing on social media. Um, so I was like, I'll just find some target group, uh, come up with some things to look for, and then, you know, manually sift through and just try to find um, interesting folks. And then shortlist those people and then monitor those juicier profiles. And that was kind of it from the beginning. I was like, I've, you know, had no real grand plans to actually do a talk like this. It was actually just uh, for shits and gigs in the, in the sidelines. And then just sit and wait, essentially, see how long it took. And then at some point, we're like, oh, yeah, but wouldn't it be awesome if we actually just went after the DEF CON community uh, instead of just any random community um, uh, for a few reasons? So as you're probably aware, if you are all those people who are in the DEF CON subreddit, there's also um, a whole bunch of other social media platforms that the DEF CON attendees um, like to use, such as the forum, such as the Discord, um, and yeah, and, and the Reddit group. So all of those things kind of um, is really helpful because they all have you know, great history. There's heaps of discussion on there. There's all different types of people on there, different skill sets. Uh, and one really awesome thing about uh, you hackers is, is uh, you like to reuse your handle everywhere. So that was really good to kind of like just track people across those three different areas. Um, and also it's on topic. But yeah, for the rest of the brief though, uh, I actually just focused on, on, on the subreddit. So yeah, where the hell do I start? I was like, it's, it's one thing to sort of come up with this idea that wouldn't it be funny to scrape, to scrape a whole bunch of social media, um, but without any kind of idea of what to do or where to find the information, what am I even looking for? Um, I was kind of like in a, in a bit of a pickle in terms of um, actually, actually starting. Uh, so yeah. We're all kind of aware of what PII is, personal identifiable information. I was pretty, I was pretty uh, full bottle on what, like, what that kind of meant, you know, your name, date of birth, social security number you guys have, all that kind of like basic stuff. I was pretty sure I could find that kind of thing. Uh, but what about all the other stuff that people leak in terms of like their own personal information? Um, it was kind of a pretty, pretty wide scope um, and I didn't really have much uh, direction as to how to sort of define it or where to find it. Um, or any kind of like ability to do that at that stage. Uh, fortunately, back home uh, at my company, I had a guy who's sitting right next to me um, who has a PhD in cognitive behavior therapy, cognitive behavior, uh, and sort of um, is a proper proper scientist uh, regarding that. And he was actually researching at the time the the tendencies. Uh, the language um, and the behavioral patterns of people preceding OPSEC incidents. And so I was like, Riley, tell me how to find this stuff. Or how to, is there any manuals? Tell me how to like search for it. Uh, and he pointed me down the track of, uh, you guys have some amazing resources here in America, your three letter agencies like CIA, FBI, uh, the National Center for uh, Counterintelligence all have really great uh, manuals and doctrine online, and I was like, oh, that's a really great place to start. Um, and not, uh, sorry, not forgetting the social engineering community here was a really, really awesome uh, treasure trove of sort of ways to find individuals and sort of target individuals. So I used all that, all those kind of uh, uh, resources to kind of guide me in how I was going to find this other kind of information beyond PII. And yeah, I came to the, they, they were all sort of pointing to the idea that there are these sort of like vulnerable, uh, sort of personal vulnerability traits um, or more easily manipulated life situations or sort of like leverageable information. Uh, yeah, like, you know, the Russians call it compromat. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, compromat. I think I'll add that to my, my list of things I'm looking for uh, beyond the sort of normal uh, names and addresses and things like that. And my kind of simple mind could sort of track that as a, as a kind of like easy way 
uh, for an attacker or a malicious actor to search for you know stuff to find like a soft target. So I was like, that that makes sense. Yeah, so I came up with this idea or this term called PVI, personal vulnerability information. You heard it here first. Um, as opposed to traditional PII. So traditional PII is just those like super basic attributes that we're all kind of aware of and that organizations and governments, uh, government policy uh, like to um, or um, have in their, in their policies uh, to protect. Um, and your standard security awareness programs also have this stuff in, in it as well. It's mostly, you know, don't put this stuff online. But if you compare that to all the other stuff that are people leaking uh, and, um, you know, isn't necessarily protected by this legislation or policy, um, you kind of have to ask yourself, like, which one do I, which one would I prefer to see in a leak? Um, and also, which one would I, am I actually leaking myself all the time? See, so, yeah, I was beginning to see, uh, I was beginning to learn that PII is sort of like just scratching the surface in terms of like online targeting of, of, of people. Um, yeah, and I was really realizing that like the real bad dudes out there are actually searching um, for people who maybe will leak rather than people who already have leaked. Um, and so if you think about all those things on that original slide, I was talking about all those like PII versus PVI, all these stuff that you might be leaking in the blue column over here have this like, um, provides an, an attacker with options uh, to, to target you. So I was like, who are these bad dudes uh, who, are, who are using this kind of stuff? And in all of the research that I was doing, I was realizing that you know, it's not just the usual suspects that we're talking about here. I'm not just talking about APTs and hacktivists. We've all heard the stuff about you know, uh, uh, online radicalization of, of young jihadis and things like that. Uh, we're actually also adding you know, stalkers, uh, jealous ex-partners, child predators, all of these other malicious actors online who are using the exact same methodology of trying to find vulnerable targets uh, using the language that, they're, that they're, they're presenting online. Yeah, so I had the what. I was like, okay, that's great. I'll be searching for actual facts about people and then kind of like personality types, language use, and those kind of things. Now, how the hell do I find that stuff on, you know, um, large, large swathes of information. So if you've been working in cybersecurity for a minute, you'd be aware of the intrusion kill chain. Just wanted to put that up there. Um, we are definitely in the reconnaissance phase here, just researching, identifying, and selecting targets. And I was kind of trying to work out like how I was going to do this. So I just decided to smush all this kind of like, all these different organizations' uh, methodologies into one kind of, uh, into one, like my plan. So use the CIA's uh, methods of like spot, assess, uh, and develop, and also mix in a bit of like the military concept of find, fix, finish, and using those things, using those resources um, online, like uh, particularly want to add the Department of Justice has awesome uh, annals of you know, cases um, here in America, or like they kind of document exactly how espionage cases unfolded and how those people were approached online. Uh, yeah, and I came up with the idea of like find, fix, follow, which I realize is just, um, it's just pretty rudimentary, but sorry, fix, find, follow. Um, so I fixed, chose the haystack, chose the DEF CON subreddit, uh, was going to find those people using those terms amongst the anonymous users, anonymous users, uh, and then assess for leakage, leakability, and tag those people for monitoring. Um, and really, at this stage, I was just doing this pretty rudimentarily, just control F, you know, finding, uh, finding words. Um, so it's pretty basic at this stage. Yeah, so sort of coming to the part where I started, started doing it. Um, so I had to have some assumptions to start with. I uh, was deciding that like, people who reveal in DEF CON, uh, sorry, Reddit, slash DEF CON, will reveal elsewhere is a pretty, pretty basic kind of assumption. Uh, if you're not aware, the DEF CON uh, Reddit is pretty small. It's pretty small traffic, uh, low traffic, sorry, compared to other, other uh, subreddits around there. And it's going to be a pretty small percentage of those, pers those users' posts. Um, so I was like, OK, if I find situations in that, 
I'm just going to track where else they're posting and try and find more information from that point. Yeah, people who re reveal big things probably do small ones also. That's a no-brainer. There is going to be old information. It's very old. Um, you know, uh, it's not very old, but as years go by, there's going to be stuff where people have changed, um, changed the information that they're, that they're presenting. Um, and of course, there will be deception because, you know, realize you guys, you hackers are, are slippery bastards. So I was really just searching for things like I work for, my email address is, my name is, um, and I live in. I realize that's pretty, pretty amateur hour, but that's just kind of like the small brain, small brain position I was in at the, to start with. Yeah, scraping was pretty slow, um, had limited results. I was really only finding one, two, three things and sort of just slowly plotting away. And I was limited to those keywords. Well, I'm not limited to those keywords, but I was limited by those keywords, just searching for those few things that I could think of as what would be good uh, strings to search for. Uh, wasn't finding me, you know, the kind of stuff I was after. And at that stage, I was, uh, yeah, I was like, I'm not really hacking this. I'm really just like pushing forward. Um, but then, you know, GPT entered the chat, uh, and I started to ask it to help me define those leaky or vulnerable language. Um, and really open up those keywords to much more things than, than, I, than I could consider uh, as possible things I wanted to leak, I wanted to search for. Um, and still some manual sifting needed then to, um, after I found those initial targets uh, through posts. Um, but those juicy individuals started to grow. At this stage, I think I had like two or three um, people with one or two little posts where I was like, okay, I think I'm starting to develop something here. Um, and Oh yeah, so if you've used ChatGPT in the past, uh, you, or currently, you probably know it does require a bit of uh, sort of convincing to get it going. I had to kind of convince it I was reviewing my own chat logs, um, make sure I wasn't revealing any personal information, um, and was quite happy to come up with you know, things that I should be looking for to try and find uh, PII and PVI. And I was like, awesome, uh, can you, but can you give me the sort of like words that might precede a leak. That would be a bit more helpful than just give me the, the concept of the kind of things that people are looking for. Uh, yeah, and then I was like, okay, can you give me a, a hundred different versions of that? Um, which, was, which was really helpful because then I could sort of um, just still doing my control F, still looking through. Um, at some stage I discovered there's like a, a, uh, a year ago it was still functioning, was a push shift IO, which is like a website we can do live queries of, of uh, of Reddit data, um, and I was just really just mandrolically going through and inserting these keywords in there and trying to search, uh, and then going back onto the subreddit and trying to find the information. Uh, it was still very, very clunky. As you can imagine, uh, some of these keywords, well, some of these sort of uh, preceding strings aren't exactly the kind of language that people are using in the DEF CON subreddit. Like, you know, I received an email from, it's just not the language that's really in there. Um, but I was finding some stuff um, here and there. Yeah, everything was going pretty great uh, until if you're, if, you, if you're a user of Reddit or if you're aware, Reddit halfway through last year or halfway through this year has just decided to cut all access to third-party apps and my super powerful search tool just kind of went dark uh, and I was left sort of motivation died, regretted not submitting that or not uh, finishing earlier, not producing any slides. Got already had already actually sent this presentation to DEF CON, so I was like... <laughs> had nothing, uh, and I was kind of like six weeks of just like whatever. It was a smart idea, well I thought it was a smart idea to begin with, um, and I was like, it's probably not gonna be possible now. But then, from total failure, I realized that some saint had been uh, archiving Reddit data since the beginning of time. So there was literally every single post, every single comment, that had ever been made in Reddit um, in one gigantic text file. Uh, and so I was like, sweet, 50,000 comments, 6,000 posts. Now I wasn't just looking at the last 12 months, I had 18 years worth. Uh, the Reddit, the, the Reddit uh, sorry, the DEF CON Reddit doesn't go back that far, but now I was really just looking at you know, a decade's worth of comments, um, which gave me a, ma a much more big, uh, sorry, a much larger uh, uh, data set to look through. Yeah, sorry. So at that stage, I was uh, yeah. So I'm 
sorry, it's kind of uh, uh, one of the problems with doing one of these briefs is you've got to remember what you were doing 12 months ago. Now I was working with a text file, so now I'm just really just searching through a text file, you know, using Python to just search for strings within the text file rather than looking on Reddit online using the search. Uh, but yeah, at some point during the year, I was listening to a Darknet Diaries episode, big Darknet fan, uh, and I was listening to Sam Bent, who he presented last year uh, at DEF CON. And he was talking about how he was using, uh, he was trying to circumnavigate the, uh, the US Postal Service to send drugs through the mail. And he was trying to work out how he was going to do it. And he was like, well, one of the, you know, one of the things, best things about uh, the Postal Service is they have a manual online uh, for what good looks like, what they're searching for. And he was like, oh, I'll just do the opposite. And I was driving along and I was like, oh, I think I could just do the opposite. Uh, so I went online uh, to uh, the Australian government website to try and find like, the kind of attributes that they, that they are looking for when they're trying to give people security clearances or, the, or they're looking to give people security clearances. And I was looking for attributes uh, for people in that sense because I was like, well, that's good, that's safe. Those are the, pe those are the things that they think people will, will present as. Um, you know, being able to keep a secret or being able to, you know, uh, you know keep the nation's secrets. Uh, and I was like, hey, ChatGPT, give, uh, give me all the synonyms for all of those things. Uh, and then also give me all the antonyms for all of those as well. So I came up with a huge list of antonyms of like the types of people um, that I was looking for uh, online. And then I was like, find me all variations of that. So it was sort of like just punched out hundreds and hundreds of, of different sentences which might suggest the type of person who you know, presents that, that kind, those kind of characteristics. Uh, and yeah, now I really felt like I was cooking with gas because I was not only searching for these things, I was searching for sort of permutations or variations of those, um, just little chunks of those, um, and I was really uh, finding a lot of results uh, using this method. Uh, yeah, so I also wanted to find those leaked facts. So thinking back to the beginning, I was also trying to find PII. Um, so you know, from a slow and sort of like noisy scrape, um, I was now using those kind of that you know GPT enhanced powerful semantic search to try and find words which sort of seemed like the person was either going to leak or had leaked. Uh, the search method method didn't change for using the PII. Uh, uh, I just had to obviously assess the, pe the, the leak's impact. So some stuff that people are leaking is really just sort of basic stuff, like down in this green area. Uh, you know, I just put this together to try to like kind of uh, visualize the, how I was assessing the t kind of things that people are leaking. And that's kind of why I call this death by a thousand likes because lots of the stuff, sure, whatever, it's just online. But it's, you know, when you, when you add it all up, it really is and it has an accumulative effect. Um, yeah, so I had to assess the impact, um, but also like the frequency. If, you, if you're, you know, if you have 500 comments in the in sort of green yellow area, maybe that's sort of only worth like one comment in the in the red in the red area. There's still heaps of error, as you're probably aware. Um, ChatGPT made a lot of things up a lot of the time, um, and it was still very human driven. I was still searching through and finding. Uh, I still had to uh, go through and look through the results and actually kind of prove or disprove whether, whether it was actually what I was looking for. Yeah, as you can probably imagine, 18 years is a long time. Uh, I had lots of false positives, lots of like, comments that people were making, and I was just like, no, that's, that's, that's nothing. Um, so that was taking quite a lot of my time. It was taking quite a lot of energy, and um, it was pretty boring uh, looking through lots and like, hundreds of false positives. There's lots of non-repeat offenders, so like you might make one mistake like one time ten years ago, um, and post something about yourself, and I was just sort of like wasn't interested in that. Um, and there was lots of target drop-off as well, so like lots of the people that I was looking at, uh, so, sorry, lots of the results that was happening a long time ago. Those people might have just like moved on and not even been into security anymore, so I kind of wasn't interested in that. Uh, the one thing I want to say about that is like it's, it's only bad in this context, right? So I'm trying to find people, I'm trying to produce slides that are interesting for you guys to look at. If it's a malicious actor, if it's like those stalkers or predators or whatever, or, or you know more advanced enemies, where like you need to imagine like they only they only need one slip up or, or one thing that they're looking for. Um, so it's only bad in this context. Um, 
Yeah, and today we're only going to look at high quantity packs. I didn't really put anything together where someone had just made one slip. But I was also thinking now I'm actually, you know, now I've got big brain, big brain mode. And then, yeah, sort of like a couple of months ago, as you're probably aware, uh, OpenAI uh, gave us access to the API. So this was huge. I was like, whoa, God mode. I was now able to just plug the data, the, the massive text file of all of those comments straight into the ChatGPT uh, prompt and just literally ask it questions about, about the data. Yeah, so I was, I was, as I said at the start, this is meant to be like a no, uh, no prior knowledge uh, brief, and I certainly had no prior knowledge before I started it. But what it meant was I didn't have to like search, I didn't have to produce any search scripts anymore. Um, I was no longer in charge of coming up with creative versions of the kind of stuff I was looking for. I no, no longer needed to, um, yeah, sorry I said that. Uh, I just all left it all up, to, all, up to the, all up to the large language model, which was awesome. It was just, um, it was really limited only by tokens. If you're not aware, when you're asking it questions, you are limited by a number of characters in and out. Um, but that really only just slowed me down. I just had to like chunk up the data into smaller pieces and re-ask the questions over and over. Um, and yeah, and in the in the in the meantime, since creating this brief and you know, OpenAI forging ahead with its with its speed of, of technology, now that 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 characters is um, that you get in and out has multiplied by a factor of I think like six or eight. It's like a huge number of um, uh, a huge token limit now. Yeah, so now is that that's the, an example up there of like the kind of things I was asking. I was like, okay, so hey, this uh, data set that I have is a huge list of it's it's like a it's a play of people who are preparing to go to a hacking conference. Uh, some people in there are really awesome, saying really positive things, and some people in there are kind of like exhibiting narcissistic or psycho psychopathic kind of like uh, uh, traits. Give me a list of the top five, and it was just like an instant. There you go. Here's your, here's, your, here's your five top targets, which was sweet. I was like, okay, so in the data, give me a list of users um, that suggests that they're that suggesting uh, the propensity to commit crimes. Show me where they live. Uh, wasn't actually showing me where they live, but it was sort of saying like, show me all the users that uh, talk about a town name, city name, or anything like that. So if you can imagine comparing to back when I was previously just using Python to search through, I would have had to look through in terms of like a dictionary search of every single town, every single place. Um, but obviously, yeah, you know, ChatGPT just knows and goes, here, here are all the people that say where they live. Show me users that suggest fear. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Show me uh, for a specific user over the last 10 years, uh, when they're online, when they make their posts. And finally, I was like, show me anyone who's looking for anything, uh, who has posted anything about work, working on anything special or out of the ordinary at their work. Yeah, so I guess the concept of the speech um, that I'm trying to give, uh, trying to get across is that the barriers of entry are completely gone. Um, all those questions that I was asking in the beginning of how am I going to do it, uh, you know, what even search terms am I looking for, what comments, what about things that don't match the terms, how do I, how do, I do it at scale, um, where is it centralized, and when, you know, when to do it, all of that stuff is completely gone um, because of all of these things that make up what we would, what we'd consider like the, the capabilities required to do that. Um, they're all inherent and anyone here can, can literally go online and, and do online targeting of people um, you know, with absolutely no experience whatsoever. Yeah, in some of my rehearsals, someone was like, oh, can't you TP4 just do this now? Like you can just plug -ins that you can just connect to the internet and you can just do it. Um, but unfortunately, it's quite resistant um, to this kind of, these kind of questions. Um, no matter how hard I tried, GPT-4 is not happy to do it. Um, so, you know, getting the data, saving the data down, getting it offline, putting it onto your computer, and then using the prompts to scan through it, much more successful.
And now, let's talk about, I think I've got like five or six target packs here that I'm going to talk through. Um, before I start, I just want to have, make a few caveats um, to, to the things that we're going to look at. Uh, certainly, this is not a, uh, a representation of DEF CON attendees at all. Like, just like you know, any subreddit, anyone in the world can join up. I think it has like 30,000 members. Um, so it's definitely not a representation of, um, of you guys here today. What were the other? So, one second, sorry. Had some very important caveats I wanted to make. Oh yeah, sorry. So the people who are um, up here obviously have their own, make their own decisions. They have their own threat model, their own thresholds of like what they want to re reveal online. Um, they probably have their own understanding of like how much um, they have revealed. Um, oh yeah, and one other thing is on the fly out over here. I had a lot more information on these slides about what they, what people had posted, um, but I had kind of like a, a moment of clarity where I was like, well. You know, if I put up any one thing that they've revealed, um, that kind of reveals everything. So I did a lot, a lot of blurring on the way over here. So uh, um, I apologize if, if, the, if it's a little too blurry for the kind of blood that you wanted to see. Um, but you know, people's privacy also in, a, in, a, in an area like this is, is, is important. Anyway, let's get on with it. So the first guy, or girl, uh, the AI hit for email addresses containing first name, last name. I uh, wanted to see talk about any illegal activity. I asked it to find comments about suffering um, and also any kind of um, you know, device information or models of modems and things like that. Um, so the first person, you know, quite a lot of hits here. Um, router brand model, uh, drug use. Um, you know, I'm, not, I'm not here to pass judgment on anyone using drugs or whatever, but you know, if you are going to post that in an online forum, um, you know, with all, all kinds of uh, actors looking at you, judging whether you're a target, and you're going to go and kind of reveal that there are moments of vulnerability about your, about your life, uh, that, could be a, that, could be a, that could be a valuable uh, data point. This person's right into conspiracies, you know, very easily manipulated, I would imagine. Uh, crypto bro, yep. And the other thing was, yeah, so like, w one thing if you think about like malicious actors trying to, trying to contact people or trying to like, have, a, have a, uh, a pathway to conversation. They might have to choose between a bunch of like their hobbies or interests. You know, a, shor a, a shortcut or a cheat code to that is like if they're actually like seeking a mentor. So this person, you know, not too much here, uh, but quite a lot of, quite a lot of uh, attack pathways. Yeah, so this one, this one I, did, I actually rev I pulled a lot down because this person was actually posting a fair bit about themselves. But this one's going along the lines of like that's the stalker kind of uh, threat. So the individuals posted, you know, their home location, uh, where they live, but also, you know, their name, age, backstory, quite a painful past, lots of like um, uh, experiences of racism and things like that, 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 that an attacker could kind of use to build rapport. But the other thing they mentioned was they're traveling alone to DEF CON. Um, and was, we're going to be at location ABC, you know, and if you're, you know, a female traveling alone and you're going to reveal everything about yourself and your backstory, as well as, you know, positive ID of what you look like, it's quite a lot of stuff um, for, a, it's quite a lot of sort of um, opportunities for someone who's trying to, you know, go after you to, to have, you know, in their back pocket. Yeah, this one's an interesting one. So this one, uh, ChatGPT hit for weekend activities, small towns, and use of their first name. So there wasn't a lot of things, but you know, uh, after I kind of was like triaging through, this is kind of like a very um, efficient uh, and minimalist kind of pathway to an attack. So if you're going to talk about the city or state that you live in, particularly this one, I think like the population was like under 100,000. Um, but also talk about a place of interest that you and your family visit on a frequent basis. And finally, talk about your vehicle description right down to, uh, you know, decals and stickers on the back of it. If someone, you know, had that kind of information, they wanted to sort of get close to you or get close to your house, um, it's, it's all they would really need um, to, to target you from, from, a, from an individual perspective. Yep, breed of pet. Um, 
sure some of the slides uh, have that kind of stuff in there. I'm not just talking about you know those standard um, don't do security things like tell people your secret questions, um, but if you're going to talk about your breed of pet, um, I think this is like the French bulldogs. So there's something to do with like every uh, every pet I've seen in DevCon is French bulldogs. Um, but if you're going to talk about that, you know you're opening yourself up to pretty pretty effective spear phishing and things like that. Um, person's also very open to online comms. Yeah, so this guy hit for, got a security clearance. I live in X location and ranks. So this is a military person, um, you know, posted to a, a certain location, revealing their career goals. You know, if the attacker is thinking about, you know, everyone has something that they want or, or every, that they're going after, if you're going to reveal your goals, that's kind of like an easy kind of offering for you. Um, talk about their career timeline, grievances at work, military rank, uh, and their workplace, and their um, openness, and, and their kind of like approach to authority. So quite a lot of stuff here. Um, I realize that in America, you guys have a little bit of a different approach to how you, how you conceal security clearances and things like that. Um, in Australia, it's fairly, it's fairly uh, it's, it's, it's just very different. It's a different approach to, to how you, how you um, manage your security clearance. Yeah, so this, was, this one had quite a fair bit. So uh, I was looking for, th I, was, I found things for gain seniority, um, specific device specifications, um, and things that they were struggling with. Um, so, you know, the AI found out quite a lot of things um, across, these, across the post from this person, particularly the pet name, breed, uh, became a senior manager quite quickly. Um, if anyone here is, you know, just to expand on that a little bit, I imagine there are probably pe people here who work for companies that have, you know, significant IP that they want to protect, or maybe you want to work one day for companies that have IP they want to protect. Uh, you know, moving up in management in those, in those companies um, is probably something that an attacker would be looking for if they're trying to, like, assess your ability, what kind of stuff you know about that company. Yet revealing router brand model. I'm not 100% sure how bad that is. You guys will probably tell me. Uh, personal demons, where they live, um, and also painful past. Person experienced quite a lot of bullying, um, and particularly the, the number of posts um, re in, with regards to this was pretty high. So you know, in terms of like building rapport and kind of like getting alongside this person, I would imagine that you know an advanced attacker would probably have um, a pretty good chance from from that from that angle. And last but not least, yeah, this is probably one of my favorites. Uh, this guy posted one time in the entire 18 years of the subreddit. Uh, posted one time, first name, last name, at whatever.com. Uh, and I just Googled that. And straight up, pictures of himself at work, ID card. You know, I'm not assuming that this is any kind of like high security area and that this is a massive security breach. but. You know, if you only just go over to the to the physical village, you can pro you can get some inf information about like just having the picture of the ID card usually will get you. Or like if you just create an imitation ID card, that's like a that's like a um, a pretty good uh, bit of information to have if you're trying to get into a facility. Um, so yeah, don't post don't post pictures of your ID card. Yeah, so those individual. Uh, target packs only revealed only revealed small things um, individually what five or six different things uh, but I kind of encourage you to kind of think about your own social media not just your reddit posts but every other social media that you use um, and think about whether you know you had more than or accumulated measures uh, accumulated version of those target packs um, and how much information a person would have if they were to just use something like AI, spend a bit of time, and create, uh, you know, create a target pack surrounding you or you know, individuals that you love or, or, or colleagues. Um, this isn't a real person. That's an AI guy. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of the speech. Does anyone have any questions? So, did you validate the data that you get it from ChatGPT? 
So is it real? Is the data in the data set? Or ChatGPT just imagined it? Sorry, I think I understood your question. You're saying, did I validate whether that it was accurate, what it was finding versus... Yeah, so as you, can, as you sort of saw in the... Um, some of those slides had like what um, the output of the search was in like the black terminal kind of section. But then I went back onto Reddit to kind of grade screenshots, make it a bit more, bit, bit more um, user friendly in terms of a speech. But yeah, I did go back, had a look at what it kind of like, what the, con what the comment was in context. Um, and that kind of, but you know, it just added to the amount of time that I had to spend doing it. But yeah, it, that required human, human interaction. Um, it was not really possible to just, um, to just have it completely automated. Yeah, does that answer your question? Or, yeah. Any others? Okay, yeah, so the question was, what, what was the most common leak that you saw over and over again? Yeah, so these were like, these are, these, I, you know, I chose these because they're like the, the, the best ones up there um, for kind of like a broad spectrum of things that people were leaking. Um, didn't see a lot of like personal names. Uh, like I was saying at the start, the DEF CON subreddit was actually pretty hard to do. <laughs> like. Some of the other ones that I was looking at, like r slash cringe and r slash NFL, like I was just sort of like wanting to see how bad this subreddit was versus other, others, and it was really good. So it was very difficult to find um, much information in there. I know it looks like those few slides, there was lots, but I probably had something in the realm of like maybe 20 or 30 which I thought would be um, would be good starting point, and probably yeah, there wasn't a lot of like first names, a lot of last names, almost zero like addresses, actual addresses. Um, there was just lots, and I, I, I think that the PII thing was probably fairly covered by people. I think most people understand and not put those kind of like in actual facts about yourself in there. Um, but the thing I did see posting over and over again was like um, yeah, personal like sort of like own feelings, own mental state. Last thing I wanted to mention actually, like the mental health slide, the mental health, uh, uh, I think it was like one of the first or second slides had a, someone was discussing their like mental status. It was kind of like a really, uh, that was a difficult one for me. Was, I was a bit conflicted about whether to put that up there because you know, a lot of people use talking about that kind of stuff in a, in a forum to kind of like help them get through it. Um, but you know, particularly if you're thinking, of, if you have a high, if you have a, uh, if you believe you have a high threat model, um, you know, revealing that kind of stuff to the entire world that you are potentially compromised in different areas, um, you know, it it does open you up to to being to being manipulated in that way or being attacked in that way. Um, but yeah, I, I can't think off the top of my head. Apologize, what like the most frequent one was? Um, maybe yeah, maybe that's a good good thing to do next. It's kind of like work out. Where the where the worst where the worst leaks are happening. Yeah. Thanks, sir. I had a question about like fact checking. So especially on Reddit, sometimes people like to role play as different things in different subreddits, and you'll see people on one forum saying, "Oh, I'm a software engineer." In a different thread, they'll say, "Oh, I'm an auto mechanic," and they might not be either, but they want to participate in these threads. Is there a way that you've kind of vetted information sharing as? Face fake or true information? Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, sort of manually, like manually, what people will do if they're like if they're calling bullshit on a person, they'll just sort of go to the user and look at all the other look at all the other posts that they're in and go through. Um, do it using this to do it. I would imagine it'd be pretty easy. Like, you know, I was only distilled down to that DefCon subreddit, so the data it was the, sorry the, the the prompt was only focused directly on that text file. Um, but if you were to compile a bunch of, you, you know, when you download that torrent, it was just like which, which, you know, it was like one and a half terabyte. I wasn't going to download it all. I just downloaded the ones that I wanted to. But if you, uh, I'd imagine this would be how I would go about it. Again, not a big, not a data guy, but this is how I would do it. Go to the person, find all the ones that they're in, and uh, yeah, go get that text file, put it all together, and then ask it questions about 
um, things like job, things like experience, and, and you know, from the results I got, it is fairly capable in doing that and looking through and finding examples um, of that kind of stuff. But yeah, not uh, I didn't I didn't actually do it. But thanks. Yeah. I was wondering uh, when you found yourself moving from Reddit to other platforms. Do you do, could you rank the platforms? Which ones people shared the most information about themselves on? Okay, yeah, so I didn't search through Discord or, or the forums um, just because Discord hates being scraped and, and the forums, um, I didn't actually find that much, you know, actual information in there. Um, so, yeah, no, yeah, thanks. <laughs> all right, I've been given a couple of minutes warning wrap up if there's any one or two questions left. Um, otherwise, thanks very much, been an awesome audience.